Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Obviously, here in the United States, this is Memorial Day weekend where we honor those who gave the last measure in defense of freedom. One war in the history of our wars involving U.S. fighting men, the Vietnam War comes with a black stain and it is beyond time to talk about it and remove that stain. It was unpopular because the news media took advantage of the turbulent times, the 60s and beginning of the 1970s, and began pushing the America sucks narrative, even going so far as to lambast our soldiers, young men, as killers of children. It was in those days that the Democrat politicians of today, like that loser right there, John Kerry, started cutting their teeth on that anti-American messaging. It was the first time that they aligned with media on a large scale and began pushing what has now, 50 years later, become their foundational message, America is bad. But what about the experience of those young men who came home to scorn and ridicule and people throwing bottles at them and spitting on them and egging them because the media had labeled them as reprehensible lies, of course. If I sound like I have a dog in this fight, it's because I do. As many of you might know, I grew up in a U.S. military family. My dad was in the Air Force and stationed in the Philippines during the last years of the war. The American POWs were flown from captivity to freedom and processed at Clark Air Base in Manila before being put on flights, which eventually landed back here at Travis Air Force Base in Northern California, where we were stationed stateside. My dad was in the Philippines, we were at Travis. For quite a few weeks, servicemen were flown into Travis and processed out of the military. I saw quite a few of those planes landing. The young men who had seen their brothers blown up and shot were not monsters. They were young, brave guys who got caught in the crossfire over the beginning of the tearing down of America. And having achieved veteran status, they were dumped on by the still forming communist contingent known as the Democratic Party. Those ungrateful, scheming politicians climbed over the bodies of our returning servicemen, as well as the KIAs, the killed in actions, to advance themselves and their emerging communist agenda. But what about the soldiers' time in the jungles of Southeast Asia when the reality of the war hit them smack in the face? Modern warfare. Many turned to the faith, not shocking given their location and oftentimes fragile grip on life from day to day. The faith was brought to them by brave clergy like Father Vincent Capadano, a Marinol missionary and Navy chaplain killed in action in a Marine Corps infantry unit on September 4th, 1967. His nickname from the admiring troops was the Grunt Padre. The native New Yorker, Staten Island, volunteered to go into hellish battle where many Marines had already been killed, but many more were severely wounded following a sneak attack by the very large force of North Vietnamese communists. He moved about the fallen, unarmed himself, blessing the bodies of the dead and giving last rites to those who needed them. He was shot and wounded in the hand, arm, and leg but refused medical evacu evacuation. Instead, allowing himself to be patched up and then going back into that slaughter that evening. He was ministering to two wounded Marines and a Navy corpsman only yards from a machine gun nest where he was cut down and killed. He was later awarded the U.S. Medal of Honor posthumously, but more importantly, his cause for sainthood has been opened in 2002. On Memorial Day 2006, his designation as Servant of God was formally announced in Washington, D.C. In 2019, Father Capadano was officially credited with the healing of a Florida woman with MS. Last year, the Vatican halted the proceedings, concerned that his actions showed more military bravery than religious fervor. Um, why are those necessarily at odds with each other? King St. Louis died fighting the Muslims during the Crusades and it said he wanted to. Anyway, the postulator of the cause is fighting vigorously to overcome those concerns in Rome. In the meantime, we'd like to show you something. 
It's this right here. It was provided to us by a longtime supporter, good friend and Vietnam chopper pilot vet, Paul Nick, he's in Houston. This is an AP photograph of what is strongly believed to be Father Capadano right here offering mass in the midst of battle. We can't be 100% certain, but all indications seem to be that this is him. In the absence of modern technology, this is a unique, no do-overs picture of God in the midst of war with his priest bringing him to the fighting men. Just take a look at this for a second. It's actually a beautiful picture. Notice that mass is being offered on top of ammo and sea ration boxes with the Marines over there on the right on their knees. That CH-53 chopper is bringing in more ammo and taking out the dead and the wounded. And right there, in the midst of the carnage and the confusion and the killing, God is present right there. Without getting into too much detail, the reasons it's believed that it is father dating of the picture, the CH-53s were in service during a narrow window of time and locale, and that corresponds to father's time and his location in the war. In addition, it greatly resembles him, greatly resembles him. So what are the odds that it could be another priest that looks like him in that time and that place in the middle of a war zone offering mass. But even if by some slim chance it isn't him, the picture itself still represents the dedication of our Catholic clergy and the brave warriors willing to lay down their lives. This Memorial Day, this Memorial Day weekend, let this image sear into your minds and offer prayers for not only Father and the dozens of young Marines who were cut to ribbons in that specific battle, but all of our fallen who gave everything they had to defend this nation. And then ponder on the madness the nation has descended into at the hands of these commies and ask yourselves, is this what they died to protect? God love you. I'm Michael Voris.